it's it's great when younger people discover something like it's never been used before, you know, yeah. and then they I become yeah. instant experts in it. They're gonna, you're going to see a whole oh, bunch yeah. of channels pop up about the expert film photography that they've discovered that they're going to let us all yes. know everything about. Three photographers from three different time zones, all connected by night photography and all shooting with the Pentax K1. We are the Night Taxians. Old Car City, what are the dates? October 25th, 6th, 7th, and 8th with a bonus location of the School Bus Graveyard on the 29th. Bring your Pentax or whatever it is you shoot with, night photography, light painting, in a cool location, 4,000 old American cars and like one Nissan, I think, with trees growing up through the trunks and the not just tree trunks, car trunks. And through windows, it's a weird place. It's just an uh, hour outside of Atlanta. We hope you can join us. It's going to be a blast. Yeah. And yeah. this is going to be a Pentax-rich uh, episode today because we're going to talk about all things Pentax. And part of the reason why is that Pentax announced their film camera project in December. And, yeah. but, oh, there's so much more. There's so much more. Um, so Takio Suzuki let slip that they're considering, get this, making a brand new manual winding film camera as part of their new film camera project. That's so, amazing. So it turns out that Mike and Tim have a little show and tell for you guys because they both have manual winding cameras. One of them is actually a Pentax. Yeah. What do you got, Mike? Uh, Let's see what you got. So, <clears throat> so what I have is a very, vintage Argus A4. How about that? Wow. Uh, this was uh, it's probably from it's a plastic uh, camera bodies probably I believe from 50s to 60s and it is if you can see <laughs> it has a winder on yeah, it. Yeah it does. It sure so does. You have to manually wind it. Yeah. So uh, and I still even have some film nice because i'm saving it for that day that maybe i get a newer film camera again that's cool that, yeah all right that would be cool i have so, uh, tim but it's you not that... oh sorry go ahead <clears throat> it's it's not a pentex though so tim you actually have a pentex yeah. i do and up until five minutes ago i kind of forgot that i had it in the room behind me here it's kind of <laughs> Came up in conversation. Yeah. So let me, um, I'm going to have to manually focus my camera here to get the camera in focus. Whoop. There we go. Okay. So yeah, it's a, it, this is a K1000 and I've had it for a couple of years now. I, I think it was just donated to me. You know, when you're a photographer, people are just like, I got all this old film equipment you want, <laughs> you know, and that's how I ended up acquiring a bunch of uh, Pentax lenses that work with the k1 because in the kit that came with all of this you know it was just one of those generic camera bags was a, a bunch of lenses so that worked sure. out pretty well for me and i um i have used those lenses way more than i have used this camera in fact i have in here a roll of film that i'm pretty confident i put in the camera eight years ago <laughs> um so wow. there might be some youthful looking pictures of my dog on there and maybe some pictures of the front yard and maybe my yellow truck but other than that i don't think i have much going on but um, i thought it'd be neat at some point and this is where the the film camera idea gets me excited because uh, i might end up doing some star trail work with the film camera and just oh how cool nice. just let the thing run right just yeah, let absolutely. it run all night long sure yeah. yeah and you don't have to worry about it now so of course yeah fun. Yeah, you, you, you get to uh, run right into that thing called reciprocity failure with uh, uh, film and star yeah. trails like that. You know, the more you expose, the more you need to expose that kind of thing. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So well, we'll see but, what happens. But uh, that so, was my goal with it. And now it's on a shelf most of the time. It's a now I'm going to read this thing. As, uh, you know, I promised that I would. So I don't want to forget. I'm yeah. Read no, please. From uh, Takeo Suzuki, who's the product okay. planner and designer for Rico Pentax. So he was being interviewed as part of this very small panel of people for a Japanese magazine called Barfoot. And uh, 
during this discussion panel, he said, first of all, we want to help young users enjoy them, them being film cameras. So I think something compact is the way to go. However, as Mr. Nagoshi said, it is not the same as setting everything to auto and saying, just press a button and you will get a beautiful shot. With that said, we are considering a brand new manual winding camera. So as you guys know, Pentax is not only adopting mirrorless, they don't even seem to be interested in it, um, yeah. sticking with DSLR, but now they're doubling down and starting not only a film camera project, but they're uh, looking at manual winding film cameras. So what Old do you think? School. That's yeah, old school, old school, sure, yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun. I bet it's going to use the lenses that I have lurking around here. That's right. You can break them out. So, yeah, one yeah. of the things is that Pentax has the, this rich history of legacy lenses, and what's really cool about this is that you can buy a lot of them for little more than a smile. <laughs> I just bought four. <laughs> yeah, <they're, laughs> yeah, I mean, they're 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 not super expensive so mm -hmm. so and and they're still very high quality lenses because they've kept the the k mount for what is it that's been going on for about 40 years now hasn't it like 75 yeah. 77 1977 yeah. okay sometime yeah okay yeah so so yeah um, it, it, that's awesome yeah i'm and excited about it so i think the idea here is they noticed that um a lot of well, uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to read, uh, rather than paraphrasing, I'm going to also read um, about the Film Camera Project. Now, this is from this is from uh, a Rico Pentax announcement in December of 2022. Okay. So, Rico stated that there had been a rebirth in interest in film cameras. So, so they said, few manufacturers today build and sell new film cameras. Some of film camera users expressed concern about the aftercare service for used film cameras. Rico Imaging is prioritizing supporting film camera fans so they can enjoy film photography without worries from film camera development, production, and sales to aftercare. They also state that um, approximately 20% of people in Japan still use traditional film cameras, not including disposable or instant cameras. 20%, wow. which is That's pretty hot. That's high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can see that they're, they're seeing that there's a lot of young people in Japan and elsewhere that are interested in film cameras. And I have a theory that mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll push onto you guys in a minute. Um, and they're seeing that it's 20%. So that's, I think that's part of their motivation in this. So here, here's my theory about young people and film cameras. Um, as some of you guys know, I'm a musician, and so I play keyboards and guitar. And what I've noticed in the music industry in the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years or whatever, is this proliferation of things like modular synthesis and um, tactile sorts of things. And I've noticed that most of the people who are really drawn to this are younger people, people in their 20s. And what they seem to be particularly attracted to is manipulating knobs, sliders, or taking patch-based synths and uh, patching from one VCO to, uh, to, to something else or what have you. It's very physical, and it, th there seems to be this real attraction to this. Or, uh, for example, LPs, overtaking the sale of cds for the first time a lot of this yeah. so much this is driven by young people <clears throat> it's a very physical thing to take you know a 12 inch thing of vinyl out of its sleeve and put it on and only listen to music for 20 minutes mm -hmm. so there there's a, a renaissance in film even on digital which sounds silly but if you look at the fuji series um Fuji X100 series of cameras, uh, which are oh, yeah. very attractive looking cameras, and they've really, yes. they've really hit the the sweet spot in design and function, and they're very hard to find. Even the ones that 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 are 
eight, nine years old are going for five or six hundred dollars. But it's the they're called recipes, these film looks. Everybody's mm. looking at these film looks now so that they can duplicate how film looks on digital. And now there's websites that share these recipes that people can download for free and upload all these new looks right into the camera so that when they take the shot, they get that instant gratification of having a you know a film look. So I think that's kind of where we're going. Yeah. yeah. One of the things I think with Fujifilm and Pentax is that there tend to be more buttons and dials outside. So you don't have to scroll through menus as much. And and I think that speaks to that physicality as well. You know, that that tactile quality of taking a photo with a camera just by twisting a dial or pressing a button. Yes. Instead of scrolling through menus. <laughs> Yeah. I love having extra buttons. The K1 specifically has more buttons than any other camera I've ever owned. Mm. And as a night photographer, I appreciate that tactile interface rather than blasting my eyes with a screen. Yeah. Uh, it's just so much easier to navigate. And I don't want to sit there and go through 18 submenus to just change something that I can do with a wheel. To find something. On the, yeah. Yeah. It, absolutely. Yeah. On the back of a camera. And that's... I don't know if anybody who shoots with Nikon is watching, but I've always found that Nikon seem, you know, a little bit more complex on the menu system than say a Canon and the, the Pentax, you could pick that up and, and find anything you need just by scrolling through that basic looking menu. It looks like uh, MS DOS from, you know, the nineties <laughs> or something, but it's fine. Yeah, it's, it is. It's totally it is. fine. Yeah. yeah. Now. And, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I just read, um, maybe about a month ago that what the the younger people are also finding <laughs> how those, those young whippersnappers are are finding interest in are uh point and shoot cameras from the 2000s mm. because they have figured out that there's it's almost going to be like a gateway thing to to bigger cameras i think for people but they they found mm -hmm. out that it's fun to shoot with something you don't have a lot of control over that doesn't have a lot of apps and now it's more about the composition and so places like uh shop goodwill or ebay are starting to see a big increase in people picking up these cameras that are 20 25 30 bucks and they can use the sd cards that are already out there and they're having a blast with them so everything's kind of coming back around so this film thing doesn't surprise me entirely um but there's a market for it i think they're doing the right thing well there is a market for it and one of the one of the things that pentax reported was um they reported a rise in earnings uh for the first two quarters of uh 2022 and bear in mind again that they don't make mirrorless cameras so they're they're looking at dslr so that's why i think they're doubling down and you know, in in this day and age when a lot of can, uh, camera manufacturers are reporting dwindling sales to actually have an uptick in sales, mm -hmm. I think Pentax yeah. might be crazy like a fox. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 worth the investment, Mike. That camera that you showed us earlier, how long have you had that mm -hmm. for? Uh, it was my mom's, so oh. it it's like I said, it's probably from the fifties. I inherited it; it still so has a roll of film in it. Yeah, you got to find out what's crazy. What's on that? Did your mom buy that new? I think so. Yeah. Wow, I think yeah, that's so. so cool. Did you look up to see what the value of something like that might be? It's like twenty bucks. <laughs> yeah, it's right. That's worth. more for sentimental yeah, value. It was, yeah, exactly. And it, it because it's an Argus. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's a pretty inexpensive brand, um, but you know it's sentimental than anything but you know it's yeah. interesting because if you think about the whole film thing 15 years ago you know it was starting to get kind of hard to to find film mm -hmm. and right uh and if you actually do a search for it now there's actually it's... um there's like uh i think there's four main brands but then there's even like a couple i'd never even heard of that yeah. are now making film so yeah. you know you're right there is a bit of an uptick in in interest for it yeah i i, I think so it's, it's so, great when younger people discover something like it's never been used before you know yeah. and then they I become instant experts in it they're gonna you're gonna see a whole oh, bunch yeah. of channels pop up about the expert film photography that they've discovered that they're gonna let us all yes. know everything about it's a trap 
I'm excited. Now, I wasn't able to share an as uh, I wasn't able to share a manual winding film camera in person with you guys, but you know my first SLR camera was a uh, manual winding film camera from Rico. Oh, nice. So Rico. I had the, so I actually started off with Rico, and then now I've you know come around full circle come again. Around. Yeah. <laughs> you remember what what model was it? I don't, and I tried looking it up, and I couldn't figure it out. Oh, okay. See, that yeah. was the one that if you had looked up, it would have been worth, you know, $180,000 because they only made, you know, a hundred of them and they're highly yeah. sought after, unlike Mike's or mine, you know? Yeah, yeah. exactly. I, I think mine's going for like a hundred bucks. You know, it's gone up a little bit, but okay, yeah, that's not bad. That's no. not bad. But if it's no. coming back as much as you say it is, it, it, some of this stuff might start increasing. People get to your closets mm -hmm. and see what you have. <laughs> Clean it up. <laughs> Might have a little gold mine going in there.